Hello again and uh, welcome back to my channel. Um, my next project I'm going to be looking at building another coffee table top uh, but this time it's going to have a MDF base. In this case I've got some 18mm uh, MDF. I'm going to edge it with some of the walnut that I've been using uh, in my cutting board uh, projects. So I'm going to, I think it should give it a nice kind of edging to it. And then on the top of the table I'm going to line it with, uh, with pennies. And then over the pennies, I'm going to give it a nice, clear coat of resin. Now, it's just two quick things I want to say before um, I start to show you the build project. Firstly, uh, in the UK, I use uh, glass cast resin. In this case, it's glass cast 3, which I've never used before. My advice with this, with using resin, is A, read the instructions down to the final letter. B, Go to the website which is uh, easycomposites.co.uk and watch some of the tutorial videos. They're really straightforward to follow um, and really give you a knowledgeable base on how to use this stuff. And then three, once you've done that, go back and read the instructions again. Okay, it's really expensive this stuff, all right? And it's not like working with wood where you can just kind of, well, I'll maneuver it and I'll get around it a little bit. Once you start the, pro once you start the process of using it, there's no going back. All right, it needs to be dealt with and used exactly how they tell you to. My second quick point is just in regards to the MDF. As you all know, it's not renowned for its moisture uh, repellent uh, abilities, uh, shall we say. And resin will soak into anything, so I have to prep the MDF cor uh, correctly. So I'm going full on belt and braces with this. I'm going to give it two coats of uh, MDF sealer um, and then I'm going to uh, Gosforth Handyman's go-to um, Leyland acrylic primer undercoat. I'm going to give it two coats of that and then it will have the top coat which is the colour I want it to be which is kind of like a slate grey. All right, It should be, I am hoping that will be enough. All right because if it isn't, the resin will get in and after a couple of weeks, it's gonna look like an absolute mess. So the prep for this one is really important, otherwise it's just gonna be a complete waste of time. Uh, I hope you enjoy the build and let's see how we get on.
Right, we're now into day three of our penny tabletop build. Things up to now are going pretty well. I really like the walnut edging around the, uh, the outside of the MDF. I like the slate grey coloured paint, which I think with the pennies going on top is going to look pretty smart. Uh, a couple of things I'm not mm, not overly happy with. The, the joints them on the corners are okay. They're not brilliant, if I'm being brutally honest with myself. Could be a couple of reasons behind that. My mitre saw isn't the most accurate when it comes to cutting uh, bevels. My measuring probably isn't the most accurate when it comes to marking things out. It's not irretrievable, but two of them are fine. Uh, there's just one where it's kind of protruding out a little bit, which I can tidy that up with a, a bit of sanding. And this one, it's just slightly higher. So I'm gonna get a, a plane on it just to level it out. It's, it's, it's okay, like, I'm happy with it. I'm just, it, it could have been a little bit better. Um, after that, so once I've sorted that out, after that, the next stage, what I'm gonna do is just on the insides where the wood uh, meets the MDF, I'm gonna run a very fine beading of uh, decorator's cork. Uh, I've got like a gray one to try and blend it in as best I can. Going back to the working with resin stuff, um, if you have worked with resin, you'll know the slightest hint of a gap or a crack or any kind of space it will just go straight through it and it will just go out the other end so you'll end up with a very expensive mistake uh, so i'm going to try my best to absolutely seal it up uh, completely so i'm going to run the cork on the inside let that dry and then going to build going back to the old belt and braces and then going to build a polypropylene casing around it um after i've put the pennies on uh, just so when I do the resin pour, if there is a slight gap or something, the actual the polypropylene casing, which it, nothing will stick to it, will contain the resin inside and it won't just leak out everywhere. So, let's see how we get on. Right, well, I uh, decided to come in for the next bit because I think I'm going to be here for a little while. I'm estimating somewhere in the region of 11 to 1200 pennies that need individually sticking down with a dab of super glue. So, best get some tunes on and get on with it then. Just realised there's something missing. Done. <clears throat> okay, we're into the next stage of the build. Uh, all the pennies have been glued down, the glue's dried. Uh, I've encased the tabletop in a, a polypropylene casing. Uh, I haven't done the video for that bit. If, if you are interested how I make these things up, just have a look at one of my other videos, the building uh, oak epoxy resin tabletop on a budget. 
and it goes into a bit of detail on how I put these together. Uh, the next stage, obviously, is, is the resin pour. Now, uh, I've decided I'm actually going to pour the resin um, in the house, which is something I probably wouldn't like to do or something I'd normally do. But a couple of things, really. It needs to be in a, a dust-free environment and it needs to be at like a regular temperature. And one thing I will say is my garage is neither dust-free or the temperature fluctuates. It, it was really cold yesterday and it, it's, it's nice and warm today. Uh, so I'm going to mix it all outside. I'll take you through that steps and then I'm going to bring it in and pour it. Just um, one other thing to bear in mind if you're thinking of doing a project like this, and this is where I made a mistake in my last one, is to make sure uh, that the table um, top is level. All right, because on my last one, uh, it was on my workbench outside, it was slightly off. So when I'm pouring the resin, it was pooling to one side as it's self-leveling. So just be careful of that and be mindful of that one if you're going to do a resin pour because you don't want to end up making, as I say, an expensive mistake. So uh, next stage, let's get myself outside and get the resin mixed and bring it back in ready for the pour.